Here at Outside, we've been fitting walking boots for nearly 35 years now. This room gets referred to as the heart of the shop. So, as you can see, we stock everything from running shoes all the way to mountaineering boots. But today I really want to concentrate on how to fit walking boots yourself. People travel from all over the country to come and see us to have their boots fitted, but we're fully aware that that's not possible for everyone. You might not have the time, or you just like to shop online. So we're trying to provide the tools for you so you can do that at home. So please be aware, this is a bottomless pit of information. You could go on forever about the subtleties of boots, but we'll try and keep it simple and go through a few examples for you. So the first simple thing to do is to figure out what size you are. Most people go, oh, I know what I am. I'm an eight, I've always been an eight. Lots of people haven't had their feet measured since they're a child. 90% of the people we measure in here, when we ask them what size they are and then measure them, they're wrong. They're usually bigger than they think they are. Feet expand and spread over time. So please get this right, it's very important. Whenever we measure you in the shop, we always make sure you're wearing the socks that you would be with that boot. So don't measure yourself barefoot and then put a really thick sock on because it make a huge difference. So start by putting the socks you're going to wear on. Next up, if you're not sure what size you are, stand on a tape measure. We want to know the centimetre length of your foot. And then you need to wrap the tape measure around the widest part of your foot, usually just behind the metatarsal, so behind your toes, at the widest part, and then get that number as well. Now using the centimetres and dimensions of your feet, have a look on our chart on Outside's website, and this will show you what size you really are in UK, and hopefully this will help you convert it into EU sizes as well because some of our shoes come in EU sizes. Using these dimensions, you'll get a width fitting for your foot as well. Now, not all of our boots come in different width fittings, such as the Altberg boots, but we will specify the width of each boot on our website to help you make the right choice. Okay, so actually getting the boot on your foot. Now, start again with the sock. So many people will just suddenly put a skinny sock on and try a big clumpy boot on, or an honest mistake that a lot of people make that really don't know they're doing is they'll wear cotton socks. You wear cotton socks, lovely boot, You'll go out there and get sweaty feet and they'll stay wet and you'll get blisters. Get a really decent pair of socks. A lot of people ask me what socks I would wear and how many pairs I would wear at a time. I've always been a big fan of just wearing one pair of socks, but I also don't want to tell people who worn two for all their lives and got away with it to change now. If you're ever using a skinny liner and then a medium width sock and it works well for you, continue to do so. The way I like it is to have the right sock and just that one pair. So something like a medium weight Bridgedale for summer or a lighter boot, then I might even go up to like a smart wool, big thick merino mountaineering style sock that I'd wear in cold weather and also a bigger, chunkier boot that might need a bit more comfort adding to it. Once you've ordered the boots you want to try and you think you've ordered the right size, a really good test is to take the insole out and stand on it. When you stand on the insole, make sure you stand up because your foot will spread. What we really want to see is at least a finger's width at the end, that's about a centimetre, centimetre and a half. Or you can, while wearing the boot, put your finger down the back and just check you've got a bit of room in there. What you really don't want is your toes hitting the front of the boot. If you start doing that, especially coming downhill after a long day or your feet expand and start getting bruised toenails, it's really bad news and you can't do a lot about a boot that's too small for you. If you've got a boot that's a tiny bit too big, you can do tighter laces or insoles or volume reducers, blah, 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 lots you can do to sort it. You can't do a lot if they're too small, so make sure you think they're the right size. When you do this, most people assume that they're not going to be wide enough for them because their feet hang off the side of the insole. Now actually that's pretty normal, boots sort of cup round like that coming up from the insole, so there's usually a bit more width than the insole will show. So once you're happy with the insole and the size of the boot, let's get it on. So when you get your boots, make sure you get your heel right to the back. And also, if you can, if you put it on a 45 degree angle, it's a really good way to fit the boots. If sometimes, if you're too high like this, you'll do them up too tight on your ankle. And if you're leaning over too far like this, you can end up doing them far too loosely once you stand up. Getting them at a nice angle gets them just right for our standing position and walking. So once you're sure you've got your heel right to the back of the boot, make sure you do your lacing from the toes all the way up to the heel. Often you'll see people just pull them tight up here. I wonder why the whole rest of the foot is slopping around. So ensure you start low down. You really want to be making sure it's snug all the way, but you're still getting some good toe wiggle at the front. Now, I always think the two eyelets are the most important, are the ones opposite the heel. This will really hold the heel down. It's particularly important with stiff boots and especially going into mountaineering boots where a solid boot 
will really lift you out the heel if you don't get it nice and tight. If you do the ankle nice and tight, we'll also stop ankle rolling. So that's one of the main causes of people um, needing mountain rescue on the hills around here. It's just a rolled ankle. So make sure this is good and solid. Now it may seem like a really simple thing, but many people aren't quite sure how to do their laces. There's hundreds of different techniques you can do. And I'm gonna show you through just a couple of them and try and keep it quite simple because we could be here all day. So firstly, the one I hope everyone knows, if you do a normal knot. And then I usually do a double bow afterwards. And that usually finds, keeps it nice and tight and it will stay done up throughout the day. If you find that you're getting lots of heel lift or you really find that you don't like the extra sort of pinching around the higher up on your shin and you fit down the ankle, here's a really simple but effective little tip to do with your lacing. So once I've done the tight eyelet that holds the heel down, I'll move straight to the top and loop over the top of it. And then I'll come down to the next one and pull the laces tight here and do the knot lower down. This way of lacing achieves two things. One, like I said, it doesn't pinch on the ankle here as much, so it gives a bit more flexibility, but also it moves the pressure a bit lower down again, so more pressure down into the heel. It'll just keep you back into the heel cup. If you find you're still struggling with heel lift, this is a bit of a fancier lacing technique that I sort of save for the really tricky ones. So if you come up from that lower eyelet again, opposite the heel, and just go up to the next eyelet, now that might look odd now, but once you thread the lace back through this new eyelet you've cr created and pull it back on itself, it creates a really tight pulley system. Now that can pinch a bit, but sometimes it'll really pin you back down in the heel and then you can go back to the top and finish off with your normal knot up there. And if that isn't working, come and see us because there might be some issues there. Once you feel pretty happy with how the boot feels on your foot and the fit and everything, Obviously, try them out. Walk around the house. We do up to 28 days to try these boots at home. Keep them clean, obviously. If you're having any issues, you can send them back to us for a full refund or an exchange, or call us or send us an email, and we'll give you advice to try and make sure you've got the right thing. Different boots will feel different. If you go from something as chunky as I'm wearing now, the tetherer from Altberg, it's gonna feel pretty different to a sort of mid light from Solomon. With something a bit softer like a Solomon mid such as this, you do find that the upper is a bit more forgiving. So if you're touching on the edges here, it's not as important as when you're touching on a chunky leather boot. It can be a bit more forgiving with the soft, subtle flexing. But still, we want it to feel just right. When you're testing these boots at home, there's a really important tip I've got for you. Don't overthink it. You go up and down the stairs 10 times thinking, oh, does that hurt? Oh, is that pinching? I can promise you'll convince yourself it's a real issue. Leave them on for a couple of hours. Try and walk up a gentle slope somewhere do something in the kitchen, if you want to hoover or something, take your mind off it. And if two hours later they're still in your feet and you've forgotten about them, they're gonna be fine. You overthink it, you will definitely create a fault in your head, whether it's there or not. Again, the variances in the boots will make them feel different at home. You might find again, straight away at the box, you're really comfy in these. And these you might have to think a little bit further into the future. We don't think you need to break them in like the old school boots where they take months of pain but you might have to think about how the leather is gonna soften over time, and it might not feel exactly how it's gonna be for the rest of its life out of the box, whereas this pretty much will. Don't be worried if the boots don't feel perfect straight away. In the shop, a lot of the time, we'd have to do a little bit of tinkering to make things just right. I'm a huge fan myself of supportive footbeds. That's gonna be another video in itself, but think about our giving a go with those as well. They come with really good guarantees, whether they've cut to size or got muddy, you can nearly always return them for a full refund. Things such as the Cedas, the Sole, and the Superfeet all support the arch and cut the heel, and that can eliminate a lot of movement in the heel and sort of really bring you up to the laces to stop the movement further down the boot. If you find you're getting a burning under your ball of your foot or your foot is sliding when coming down a hill, they can really help with that because the arch support acts like a bit of a bump or a speed bump to stop you sliding. If you find everything about the boot is perfect other than a little bit of heel lift, you might not be filling the heel properly. A really simple solution is a volume reducer. Again, you can just chop this to size, slide it under the insole, and it'll just take a bit of that room out and just stop that heel lifting up and down. So you really don't want to cause blisters on the back of the heel. That's the main bugbear that people have with boots. So we hope you found that useful. Don't be afraid to get in touch with us during, before, or after getting your boots. We want to make sure that they fit perfectly. If you're in any doubt, call us, email, 
live chat, whatever you like, and we'll try and make sure this fits perfectly. The last thing we want is you stomping over the hills with blisters. We've been doing this a long time and we want to make sure it's just right. Okay, we hope to see you soon.